go. Hi, my name is Paula Janis. And I'm Brett Rabinovich. And the recap starts... starts now. Do you know what one of the best sports for a girl to play is? Um, cheerleading? No, flag football. It's a great game that both girls and boys can play, despite the stereotypes. Check out this package on the flag football season. With the returning season to girls flag football, our Jaguars hope to have a successful season. Having practice almost every day, coaches work out extensive plans and runs and hope to score during games. The girls have played eight games with a two and six record with the goal to make it to the playoffs. Uh, the girls play football team, we practice Monday through Friday, sometimes Monday through Thursday, uh, three to five. It's a quick series, a uh, season. It's a 10 game season and sometimes when the season starts, we have two games a week, normally on Tuesday and the other one on Thursday. So you have to put all of your offense and your offensive package in at the beginning of the season and get it started so that you're ready to take on the challenge of uh, playing in this district. Our Jaguars recently played Coral Springs Charter and ended the game in a victory. Having this win inspires them to continue a winning season. We've been working really hard this year. Um, we were really excited about our win against North Broward last week. Um, I hope that we can progress and make our way on to finals. Good luck to our girls flag football team. With WJG, I'm Brianna Glenn. Brett, you've just been served. What are you talking about? Sorry, I'm still thinking about volleyball. I'm still excited about the game against Douglas. Last Thursday in the gym, there was a critical boys volleyball game against Stoneman Douglas High School. The Jaguars put up a strong fight, making the last set close with a score of 24 to 23. The game determined the seedings for the district tournament. There was a great number of students that attended the crucial game. With districts on the way, the boys volleyball team is hard at work and up for the challenge. I think we have a good chance to make it to the finals. Pretty sure we will. Um, we play Douglas again, probably in the finals. We be in every team that is in their district besides them. With WJAG, I'm Caroline Kaplan. Yeah. April 5th was Tom's A Day Without Shoes. Students walked around barefoot in order to support and raise awareness for people who don't own shoes in third world countries. And Tom's is a company that sells shoes. And every person who buys a shoe, the proceeds go to make other shoes for children who don't have shoes. And they hand out shoes to those kids. And um, the reason why I was barefoot is to raise awareness for those kids who don't have shoes. And people are like, ew, why are you doing that? That's gross, why can't you just tell people? But I think it's different, like, it's more dramatic. When people see you barefoot, they're like, they'll come up to you and be like, oh, why are you barefoot? And then you could tell them. And it, it's a different way to do it, I guess. Instead of by mouth, they'll see it and want to buy Tom's or donate shoes to a charity. I did Tom Save No Shoes, but I didn't just do it for Tom's because it's not for the brand name. It's for the kids in Africa who aren't able to wear shoes every single day. I figured, you know, we can all go out, go without shoes for just one day if they can go every day for like years. Um, I went to a bunch of places outside of school, but I went barefoot all day. And I went into Denny's, I went to Walgreens and CVS and Publix. Um, I almost got kicked out of a couple places before I told them why I was doing it. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, my feet were really dirty, but um, it was for a good cause. Although some students didn't participate, walking barefoot definitely brought some attention. I felt that it was a um, good cause. It was great to see like people supporting um, children that didn't have any shoes in like third world countries and stuff like that. 
Despite the reactions and judgments of others, over 300,000 people nationwide participated in this eye-opening event. With WJG, I'm Brooke Savage. Paula, I love the month of May. School coming to an end, going to the beach, my vacation to Aruba. You forgot about AP exams. Oh, I am not ready for those at all. But many students are. Let's check out how students at Coral Glades High School are getting prepared for the AP exams. With FCATs over and done with, AP exams are coming fast. Teachers are doing their best to prepare their students for the upcoming exams. Ms. Brissett tells us what she does for her students. I hope to have about eight after-school review sessions. Um, I've been teaching my students all year how to write an essay because the AP exam is three essays and 70 multiple choice questions. I'm quite confident in their performance. If they just take it seriously and actually study for the AP exam more than one day ahead of time and read an entire review book, since they know how to write an essay, they can pass. That's all they have to do. AP student David Fine tells us his plans. Well, I've been doing a lot of practice. I go up to school every Monday and Friday for eight push reviews. You know, I have review books for every single one I'm taking. You know, it's just going to be a blast. I can't wait to study for all of them. Even with his heavy workload, he seems confident enough. I think I'm going to do just fine, you know. So maybe, maybe I'll, I'm pretty sure I'll do all right. I mean, they're, they're okay. AP exams start the first week of May. Visit guidance or ask an AP teacher for a detailed schedule. From WJG, this is Anna Avellaneda signing off. Have you figured out where you're going to college yet? Actually, I have, but a lot of students haven't yet. Well, they should check out the College and Coffee Night. On Thursday, April 7th, a College and Coffee Conference was held to discuss the SAT and ACT tests with parents. The meeting was conducted by Barry Malice, who has been preparing students to take these tests for seven years. Breakfast was provided for those that attended the event. Parents were able to have their concerns addressed as Barry shared his own personal experiences with the two tests and discussed statistics that went along with the test results. With WJAG, I'm David Creasy. Paula, who's been the most honest president in the history of the United States? George Washington, wasn't it? Hope you weren't being honest with that answer. Check out this week's edition of Question Mark. I don't want to make you look any stupider, so actually, yes I do. What sport used the term home run before baseball? Soccer. Basketball. Football? Softball. What were the New York Mets originally called? Um, the New York Giants. Who was the first man to step on the moon? Uh, Lance Armstrong, or you know whatever the guy's name is. Lance Neil Armstrong. Yes, Lance and Neil. They both stepped on at the same time. <laughs> One was on a bike though. Lance, uh, Lance, Lance Neil, Lance Armstrong. Where was President Obama born? Georgia. They said Kenya. <laughs> Who's they? <laughs> um. People on the news, my family. <laughs> Do you only watch Fox News? New York. I don't know. New York. Not even close. <laughs> like Africa or like Jamaica. <laughs> Who is the only person to play in a Major League Baseball game and a National Football League game in the same day? Um, <laughs> Dave Ruth. I don't know. What's his name? Uh, something Bruce. Bruce Springsteen? <laughs> Babe Ruth. What divides Alaska from the rest of the U.S.? Russia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the dumbest one in a while. All right. The Great Bering Sea, right? Snow. Who was the first and only president to resign in office? Um... <laughs> George Bush Sr. <laughs> Bill Clinton was governor of what state before becoming president? Florida. New York? I'm going to say New York. Like Chicago, Illinois, Chicago, <laughs> Illinois. He was the governor of Chicago. <laughs> Who is the superintendent of Broward County Schools? Uh, Daniel Alonzo. 
Miss Kessler. <laughs> Mark. I don't know. <laughs> Mark. His nickname was Tricky. <laughs> Well, Jaguars, that's all we have for this edition of The Recap. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Oh! <laughs> for the... Oh, oh, my God. A sport that... A girl... <laughs> a girl... To, to, oh, my gosh. Sorry. You know what one of the best... best oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. I'm going to switch anchors with you in 10 Fine. seconds. No, that, that's what it says on the screen. Yeah, that's what it says That's on literally the what it says. Let's check out this edition of Mark Walking. Isn't it called a question mark now? Yeah. It's like, oh my god, well, um. It's a decent. Oh, I just. Oh, that was gonna be really good, too. Jaguars, that's our. Jaguars, that's. <laughs> we have for today. <laughs> this edition of the Today Show.